Hi everyone, welcome back to our last episode on the HPG Axis. Uh, in previous videos, I covered a simplified version of the HPG Axis, and then last one we talked about the ovaries. Well, in this one, we're going to be talking about specifically how GnRH, LH, and FSH act on the testes. And this process isn't going to be as intense as the most recent one about the ovaries, um, since we're not dealing with ovulation or the menstrual cycle at all during this pathway. But at the same time, this is our desimplified pathway. So if anything doesn't seem to make sense, go back a couple videos before this one to the simplified pathway, where I combine everything all together in a much more easily digestible video. And um, once you watch that one and feel comfortable with it, then you can come back to this one and get some of the extra juicy details that we have with the cells in the testis. So without further ado, uh, let's start off once again with the hypothalamus. And our hypothalamus is going to secrete GnRH which is going to float down to the anterior pituitary. I'm just gonna put ant pit, because you get the idea, which then produces two hormones, LH and FSH, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone. If you remember previously, the LH is going to act on a cell type that we have seen in videos a long time ago um, called the Leydig cells. If you remember, Leydig cells produce testosterone. So we're going to have testosterone and FSH stimulates the Sertoli cells And it's not going to produce MIF. I know in the previous video about Sertoli cells, we talked about MIF, but we're going to talk about two different hormones today from the Sertoli cells. And these are inhibin. So very similarly to the ovarian pathway, we have inhibin that is produced by the Sertoli cells. And we also have a molecule called androgen binding protein, also known as ABP. So ABP is what is bound to testosterone. I think it's also bound to estradiol um, in the testes and in the blood. And when ABP is bound to testosterone, it is not going to be converted to DHT and it's not going to have a lot of its uh, hormonal effects. So in essence, androgen binding protein is kind of an inhibition on testosterone because while testosterone is bound to ABP, it is not going to function like it normally would be. Testosterone has to separate from ABP in order to have its effects on the cell. So let's look at our regulatory mechanisms. So we have the same negative feedback like we did in the last video, testosterone is going to have negative feedback at the hypothalamus and at the anterior pituitary. So it's going to tell the hypothalamus that we don't need any more testosterone so we can decrease the level of GnRH and we can decrease the level of LH and FSH. And then inhibin, as we learned in the last video with the ovaries, um, inhibin is only going to inhibit FSH. And so we have an even further decreased level of FSH, the more inhibin that we produce. And then um, testosterone, as we produce more and more testosterone throughout this pathway, it is actually going to stimulate, so I'm gonna draw this in green, it is going to stimulate further production of inhibin. So we get extra stimulation of an inhibitor. And so if we stimulate an inhibitor, so you're having more negative effect, we're going to have stronger inhibition of FSH and therefore decreasing um, 
more levels of these hormones. So let's go back through this pathway. We have uh, our hypothalamus, which is going to secrete GnRH. GnRH is going to float to the anterior pituitary, uh, cause release of LH and FSH. LH is going to stimulate the Leydig cells to produce testosterone, which testosterone is going to build up and build up and build up in these cells. And once we have lots and lots of testosterone, it's going to send a negative feedback back to the hypothalamus saying we don't need any more GnRH. And so we're going to downregulate this. And then um, it's also going to tell the anterior pituitary we don't need any more LH or FSH. And then as well, uh, inhibin is going to be stimulated by testosterone. Inhibin is also going to be a team player. Go back to FSH and tell FSH we don't need any more. And so now with decreasing levels of GnRH, LH, and FSH, we will then have decreased levels of testosterone until uh, we get to a point when we need more testosterone and then uh, the process will start all over again from the hypothalamus. And so I hope all of this made a lot of sense. And in the next video, we are going to talk about puberty blockers and how they work with these processes. And I hope this was all interesting for you all. Please like, comment, uh, subscribe, hit the bell, and I will see you all in the next one.